Hello everybody, uh, I'm doing the request video from one of my subscribers to have a look at my bookshelf behind me. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, I think I might try and take a close up of each shelf and then maybe comment on one or two of the books off each shelf. Um, There's a couple of things to bear in mind if you are interested in watching this video. The topics covered by this particular bookshelf are magic, witchcraft, paganism related ideas. If any of that is offensive to you, perhaps you have particular religious beliefs or perhaps you're a hard-headed scientific rationalist. Either way, I'm not forcing you to watch the video. Just bear that in mind. Now, as I say, I'll comment on one or two off each shelf, I think. Um, there's probably over 200, maybe 250 books behind me, so we'll be here all day if I sort of go through them one by one. So I'll get started on the close-up and see if it works. Okay, so hopefully you saw from that little scan, um, the bottom shelf is primarily what would be called maybe Earth Mysteries and some um, English folklore at the right hand end. Straight away this first shelf um, introduces a key theme for the collection. Um, a lot of these books are out of print and a lot of the thinking in these books is out of date. Um, having said that there are plenty of books that we'll see which at the time they were written were cutting edge. So you've got things like Stonehenge Decoded, Gerald Hawkins, or Ralph Whitlock in search of lost gods. At the um, right hand end, we've got, um, as I say, a couple of books on English folklore. Margaret Baker, perhaps, being one of the key ones there. So, on to the next shelf up. At the right hand end of the shelf, these tall books here are strictly aimed at children. Fairies and elves, wizards and witches, ghosts, water spirits. But there is some lovely artwork in those. And then we've got the last few of the sort of ancient mysteries type almanacs. Oh, sorry. Move along. Um, more sort of book club specials and then into uh, a few books here on Alistair Crowley. The majority of those were given to me I probably wouldn't have spent any money on those uh, except perhaps for um, this one. Quite interesting. Now, shelf three. Um, need to mention here, in the intro, I said there were a couple of points uh, that I needed to make, and then I only made one of them. The other point is that this collection of books is, to a degree, indiscriminate, meaning that I have quite cheerfully bought complete and utter nonsense, 
quite as happily as buying books that might be considered of any serious value. And by and large, I'm going to leave you to decide for yourself what the nonsense is. Um, some of the books are clearly nonsense from the first look at the cover. Some of them need to be read to realise just how dreadful they are. Um, for example, I mean, we've got some more Crowley there, which is neither in or there to be honest. Um, the Zelator. Complete and utter gibberish. I've got my bookmarks there. Never got to the end of that. It's tripe. But then you've got books that are considered um, standard works. Dion Fortune's Sane Occultism, Psychic Self-Defence. Moving along, sorry for the dodgy camera work. Uh, I'll just pick out a prime example of the nonsense. make of that what you will. Ooh. And I'll just go in a bit closer just in case you didn't get a proper look at the end of that shelf. So we've now moved from um, the wobbly table to entirely handheld camera work. Um, so on this shelf, number four, we've got a little bit of um, magic at that end. Then moving through uh, witchcraft. Some old standard works, some sensationalist nonsense and some books that are quite worth reading. So shelf five, uh, the rest of the witchcraft books ranging from stuff like that, which is uh, an academic study and is dull as ditch water to things that are considered standard works, Janet and Stuart Farrer for example. Uh, this end we move into Voodoo. Not many books on Voodoo. Uh, a couple of standard works, Maya Deren and Alfred Matro. Took me a long time to get a translation of Matro. Um, but as well as the standard works there are of course a couple of nonsense titles. So on the top shelf we've got more of a mixed bag. Uh, various paganism titles. Mysticism, shamanism, through to theosophy. Uh, one there, The Immediate Future by Annie Besant, who, to all intents and purposes, took over the Theosophical Society from Madame Blavatsky. So up above uh, the bookshelf we've got a box of some fiction titles, Algernon Blackwood on the end there. Uh, very much out of fashion, but very much well worth reading. Uh, Dion Fortune titles. Graham Greene, Christopher Marlowe, people like that. So that's a quick uh, shufty at the bookcase that's behind me in quite a few of the videos. Um, I've not looked at any other bookcases. Um, the history, geography, science, travel, music, blah blah blah. Um, I don't think really they're 
what the request was um, concerned with. So there you go. Hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.